And that's what I got from there when they said they cried out to their God. So my thing is, what God are you crying out to? Mm. Are you crying out to man? And we, as, and even with single women, you know, just single people, a lot of times, you know, even with us, there are times that we get in a tight fix and we be in a, in a squeeze. But then, who do we call out to? What God are we calling out to? Notice I said little G, not big G. Mm -hmm. But what God are we crying out to? A lot of times we're crying out to that man Come on. to help us. Then we'll sell ourselves short. A lot of times we're crying out to that God. And that's not the God that we should be, be crying out to because the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Everything in this earth belongs to God. Right. There is nothing that he can't do and won't do. There's nothing that's too hard for him. There's nothing that he cannot fix. So we have to make sure we don't cry out to those little gods because guess what? As we go further down the chapter, we'll see even though they all cried out to their God, it wasn't their God that was able to get them out. Come on now. It wasn't their God that saved them. It wasn't their God that delivered them. The one true living God, the God, the most high God, That's was it. the one was able to get them out. Okay. Verse, verse 6. So the captain came to him and said to him, What do you mean, sleeper? Arise and call on your God. Perhaps your God will consider us so that we may not perish. And I got to thinking about that and got to reading. And even with Jonah, now every man is crying out to their God. Where is Jonah? Sleep. Remember, he down low at the bottom. And the thing is, all this ruckus is going on. All the chaos is going on. But he's he sleep. And it's just like that's with us. You know, we know we need help. Mm -hmm. We know we got an issue. We know we got a problem. Come but on. we become so desensitized that we can't even discern what's even going on around. Come on, team. We know even the presence of God when he's around or when he's moving. So we become so desensitized. And that was just like with him. All this was going on, he's so desensitized that he's not even aware of what's even going on. Jesus. And I mean, so how is it that the sinner man is out here knowing that, hey, we got to get some help. Lord. We as believers, keep in mind, this is his mouthpiece. Jesus. This is God's prophet. God's prophet now, household of faith, believer, but yet still, he won't even cry out. Jesus. So you don't even recognize that God even around, and you know, and that goes to show that that happens with us a lot of times. We can be right here in church. Come on. Fire baptized, tongue speaking, Holy Ghost fear, fire baptized. Come on. And still not recognize his presence and become so desensitized. And prideful. Exactly. And that'll get you no know, and that will get in the way. And but then here's the, the thing about it, you know, even though with that, you know, and I was sitting there, there thinking, I said, you know, I said, you know, Lord, don't allow me to be in a Get, ever get to a place to where I don't recognize when you're around yes. or recognize when you're not moving or not knowing where your presence is because that's a bad place to be and I have been in a place like that where I experienced his glory or experienced his power and then when I got in sin and started doing what I want to do and his presence was gone I felt so alone, I felt naked I just felt lost, I felt abandoned when I had stepped out of his will and that's the way that, that feels like. So when you're so used to having his presence like that, I just can't imagine just, just not having it. Especially once I got a taste of it. When he said, oh, taste and see that the Lord, Lord is good. good. Yes. And he's good. So once you get a taste of him, it's just like you can't go back to anything else. Mm -mm. And so if you don't want Ichabod, and that means the glory has left, the presence has left. And we don't never want that be written over us or mm -hmm. even in our homes or even in our lives or in our temple we definitely don't want that because if you ever experience his presence and know that he has been around and then he's gone it's it's a bad place to be I'm telling you what I know I ain't telling you what I heard I'm telling you what I know and it's just like you don't hear you can't hear anything it's just like you can't discern anything and you just feel so lost and so if you think about it remember I said you know he ran from the presence of the Lord. So because he's running, he's down there in this pit. So he don't hear nothing. He don't he realize what's going on. So so keep in mind. So it's just like it was Echabod. The glory is that the presence has left. He, he don't even recognize it. He's so desensitized and not even aware of what's going on around here. It's a storm, no big storm coming. It is about to no, tear y'all shit up. And you, you're not up and you don't recognize it's me? Jesus. You know, how is that? Verse 7. 
And they said to one another, Come let us cast lot, that we may know for who caused this trouble has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. And they said to him, Please tell us, for who caused is this trouble upon us? What is your occupation? And where do you come from? What is your country? And of what people are you? And so when they begin to like to cast lot, I'm thinking about this the little thing where like you do the straws, mm -hmm. and you know how you'll get to have all the straws, and you have in your hand, you get to pulling. And so once you begin to pull the straws, and then whoever had the short one, that's the culprit. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty much how this was in this instance, you know, even with Jonah. So they found out, you no, know, he's he's the culprit because they couldn't figure out, you know, why all this stuff is happening. Where is this you no know, coming from? Because in there, I was reading, too, uh, when I had broke it down, you know, actually, we was talking about they begin to start looking, not at themselves, but they start looking at each other, okay, like, is it you that causing all this trouble? Is it you? Is it you? Okay, you probably lie. You probably steal. So they trying to figure out who it is that causing all the trouble. So nobody not looking at themselves. They looking at each other, and that's what we do a lot of time in the bodies. We don't look at ourselves. A lot right. of time we looking at other people to see who it is that causes the ruckus. And a lot of time it's us, right. you know, that's doing things. And you know, we don't like to fess up to it. We don't like to admit it, and we don't like to own up to it because it's really hard, you know, looking at yourself and seeing the real you. And I'm coming to find out. No, too, and I have learned this, you know, that's why it's so easy to praise and shout and jump up because, see, you can shout over them demons. Okay. You can shout over them. You can jump up. Okay. And, you know, and so nobody will know the difference. But when you come to worship, that's a different thing because it's going to show the true motive of the heart. Mm -hmm. And that's how you get intimate with him through the worship. And so when you begin to the worship, he'll begin to show you, you, not both, you. you. And it starts with you first, because so you're the first partaker. He has to deal with you first before he allow you to, to he'll bring anything else to you. Because that's what I had to learn with myself when I didn't have the right attitude, had a nasty attitude, talk to people in any kind of way, and had bitterness. And God would not reveal anything to me or show me anything concerning nobody else. Come on but now, me, but my mess and myself. You know, and so it's it's amazing how you know that we we like to say, "Thus says the Lord," or God showed me this in prayer. When you know you got all these issues, so if God is, is just that He can show you all these things concerning me, why He's not showing you about your attitude? Some why is He not showing you about your bitterness? Why He's not showing you about the way you talk to people, the way you treat people? Why He's not dealing with you with the unforgiveness? Come on. So He's gonna deal with you first. And see, once he began to deal with you, he'll be able to come in. And that way he'll begin to show you more things because he'll be able to trust you. And then you'll be able to go out to minister to his people. Because he's not going to let you damage and hurt his people. Because God loves his people. That's it. He loves his people. He's not going to allow us to sit there and damage them and mistreat them and do them any kind of way. Mm -hmm. He's just not going to allow that. So the best thing is that we need to do, we need to make sure we deal with our issues first. And it always starts with us, and it's not a bad thing. Right. It's actually a great thing. Yeah. He chastises though he loves. It's not a great, it's not a bad thing. It's a great thing yes. when he does that. And you know, a lot of times, you know, in the body of Christ now, we think because somebody go through deliverance, something is wrong when he said deliverance the children pray. Yeah. So I don't get I don't get that. So the thing is, you know. When somebody do get delivered, or get their healing, or get their breakthrough, they and they on the on the floor, we administer deliverance to them, and then the next thing you know, you don't want to sit by them, you don't want to talk talk to them, Jesus. point the finger and then say, you know what, you know they got delivered, they got all these, they, things, got, they got a bunch of demons. I mean, we say all those things, but yet and still, this person had this stuff all the time, and was sitting right by us, and you ain't know, we didn't even, and we was comfortable with it. But what you got? You know, so we was we were comfortable with it. So that's that's one of the things. But you know, when people get healed, get their deliverance, we look at that something strange. Oh, they at the altar. They go on to the altar again. So that's what you're supposed to be on this altar, dying daily, crucifying this flesh. It don't matter how many times you go up in between you and God. You let nobody stop you that's from getting it. what you need. That's I don't it. care if you come up here five times. You, you come up here to this altar because you never know. 
when is your time? Because that may be your last time coming right. up to this altar. Right. It may be the very last time. There's no guarantee that even when we leave this place that we're going to see each other. That's Tomorrow, it. there's no guarantee. But guess what? At this moment, at this time, guess what? I can get here to this altar and I can get it right. That's it. I can get it right. I can make sure I don't let this be dealt with my heart. That's it. Because the one thing I, I, I notice is too, that it's easy to recognize people when they fornicating. Come on. They drinking. Mm -hmm. You know, adultery. That's that's easy. So you can point out a thief. It's easy to point those things out. But I'm going to tell you, if you got somebody who got bitterness, <laughs> jealousy, envy, um, on. in their heart, that's a dangerous person. That's it. That is very dangerous because those are the things that you can't see. Come on. From the inside. And that's why it's going to take that discernment. Discernment. That's why it's going to take that because that's not something you can see on the outside. But if you see me up here doing this, no smoking and sitting up here, no flirting with a man, that's something that you're able to see. That's, that's it. visible with the eye. You're able to see that. You know that. But if you're sitting up there rolling my eyes at you and say, girl, I love you, but deep down like I can't stand you, that's a dangerous person. That, that's a dangerous spirit. And that's why we have to have that discernment but because we don't know. Because what I'm learning is that, you know, the OJ said something with their song, and you know, and it was saying about backstab. They smiling in your face, come on, all the while they want to take your place. I mean backstabbers, and I mean so now these demons now ain't stabbing you in the back, they stabbing you in the front. I mean they bold with it. I mean yeah. they just come at you, and you know a lot of times people are trying to. Make your life so miserable because, like, they say misery love company. company. And when you try to do good, and when you try to say, Okay, I want to do better, I want to go, I want to grow in God, I want to learn more. Now, people come as you think you all that, yeah, now you think you so holy. Uh -huh. You stay at the church now. Why you always go? You didn't used to do that, but they want to bring their past up, to right? You. My past is the past. That's where it is. I have been redeemed from the curse. Come of on, God, that's who it. The son has made free as free indeed. Yes, I fornicated. Yes, I had a baby out of wedlock. Yes, I told lies. That was then, but this is now. Come and on. No one is not going to hold me back to the past. That's it. Nobody. I refuse. And I say that for the same thing for all of you. Do not allow anybody to hold you back for what you used to do. Yeah, you used to be nasty and used to cuss folks out. Yes. But you allow God to deal with you in that area, in that place, and He delivered you. You are delivered. When he does it, he does it to eternity. Come on. Amen. You know, so it ain't like we get delivered and okay, we're not delivered. A lot of times we backslide and we go backward. Uh -huh. And we go back to those things and we don't maintain our deliverance. And that's what happens. We begin to leak out. That's the things that begin to happen with us. So do not allow anybody to hold you back to what you used to be and what you used to do. The ED on the end, that's past tense. Used to. That was old.